Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk more about monitor calibration and profiling, and then I'm going to demonstrate this process using the device that I have. Now, as I talked about extensively in my intro to color management video, it's very important that you be able to trust your monitor. If your monitor is too bright, for example, your prints are going to look much darker than your monitor. And of course, for our sanity, we want them to match as close as possible, whether you're doing printed output or other output. Now, Windows and the Mac come with built-in calibration software. The issue with that software is that they require judgments from you, and our visual judgments are very fraught with error. For most serious amateur photographers, and of course pro photographers, I recommend that for greater accuracy that you actually purchase a calibration device and the software that comes with it. Now, if your printed output is completely within your range of tolerance as far as a match to your monitor, maybe you don't need to invest in this right away, but definitely keep it in mind. Now, the calibration process is actually a two-step process. In the first step, this device, which sits on your monitor, reads your monitor's brightness, contrast, and color, and gives you instructions on how much to adjust the settings on your monitor itself. So you're actually changing your hardware settings on your monitor. Now, I personally have buttons on my monitor that allow me to control all three of these settings. If you're on a laptop or on a Mac display, you may in fact only have access to setting the brightness, and that setting may be on your keyboard. Regardless, this process will guide you through setting whatever controls you can so that it's as accurate as possible. The next step of the process, the profiling process, takes care of any continued inaccuracies. After you've set the settings for your monitor, it remeasures brightness, color, and contrast of your monitor to detect those continued inaccuracies, and it creates this set of instructions called a profile that Lightroom and other color managed applications such as Photoshop use to adjust your images as you're viewing them in the program. So let's say your monitor was too red and you have no color controls. To change that, this set of instructions would tell Lightroom to back red out of your photos so that they would appear correctly. Now in the calibration process, there are a few mission critical settings. You'll set the white point or the color temperature at 6500 Kelvin or D65, and you'll set the gamma, which controls contrast, at 2.2. Now for photographers, these two are pretty much cut and dried. Now luminance, on the other hand, is not cut and dried at all. As I mentioned in my color management video, if you view your monitor in a dark room, it looks a lot brighter than if you view that monitor in a really bright room. So there simply is no correct luminance setting. Now recommendations that I've read generally range from setting this luminance somewhere between 80 and 120. So 80 in darker rooms, 120 in brighter rooms, and I, frankly I've seen recommendations for the full range. I found that for me, working in my office that's a bit dim, but definitely not dark, that something in the 85 range has worked well for me. I say here, start with 90, and I think that is a good starting point, but you may have to experiment with this. You're going to calibrate your monitor, and then I would do some test output, some test prints, whether you're printing them yourself or you're sending them out to the printing service that you trust. If the prints look too dark, your monitor is calibrated too brightly, so you'll want to reduce this, recalibrate and reduce this. If your prints look too bright, then your monitor is too dark, and you'll go with a higher setting on this. Now some of the newer devices, including the one that I'm going to show you today, can actually read the ambient light in the room you're working in and give you a recommended luminance. So that can be an excellent starting place if your device has this feature. Now there are many products out in the marketplace, and I don't even pretend to follow them all. I certainly have not tried them all. Here are a couple, though, that I'm familiar with. X-Rite makes both the Color Monkey line and the i1 display line. I had an old version of the i1 display that served me very well for over eight years. I've now updated to the i1 Display Pro. 
x right would say that this is for color perfectionists, for that ultimate inaccuracy, and that this might not be quite as accurate. But this is still a fine product. It tends to be more automated in how it works. The i1 display gives you more control. And you'll see me again demonstrate this one in a moment. Spider is another very well-known brand out there. I haven't tried their products. I have no reason to believe that they're not also high quality products. These are just examples of prices. They happen to be today's prices on B&H. The list prices are higher, but it gives you an idea of the level of investment that I'm talking about. Now, I believe all of these lines have more expensive versions that also allow you to create printer profiles. So watch my video on printer profiles for a discussion on whether it makes sense to invest in that more expensive equipment. Finally, while this may be obvious, I'll point it out. Of course, my video is being recorded at a fixed point in time. It may very well be that by the time you watch this video, there are different options out there from these companies and from other companies. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate calibrating my monitor with this i1 Display Pro. Now my intention is not to convince everybody to go get the i1 Display Pro. My goal in the demo is simply to give you an idea of how the process works. The exact features in the software will be different between these and other products, but the basic process will be the same. So I'm in the software that comes with my i1 Display Pro, and I have a choice here to go with basic or advanced mode. I'm going to go with basic mode. There are a lot of settings in advance that I'm just totally fine with the defaults on, and I don't want you to be overwhelmed by this. But I will come back and revisit this after the basic demonstration. So I've set it to basic. Up here, I'm going to choose to profile my monitor. Notice that I could also profile a projector. With this software, I couldn't produce printer profiles. This is just a demonstration here. But I'm going to go ahead and profile my display. I'm going to choose my monitor, and I'm going to set the white point, as we discussed, to D65. Now this particular device, as I mentioned, has the ability to measure the light in my room. So I'm going to do that, but I could also just choose a target. If I wanted to start with 90, I could go to Custom and type in 90. I'm going to go ahead and measure the light in my room. I've got the device plugged in and it's sitting in front of my monitor, just like this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Measure. Now, I've got the lights on in my room that I always work with turned on. So I'll click Measure, and right here has measured that light, and it's recommended that I set my luminance to 80. Now, just to show you the implication of working in a brighter room, I'm going to turn on another light in my office, and I'm going to re-measure this just to show you that in a brighter room, the recommended luminance or brightness for your monitor will be higher. Okay, let me turn that light off, measure again, and this time I'm going to choose to keep the measurement. So my luminance target will be from that measurement. This software also has the ability to regularly measure the light in my room and adjust the profile or the instructions for Lightroom as the lighting conditions change in my room. So I would keep the device plugged in and it would take regular measurements. I choose not to do this. I always work under the same lighting conditions. I have control over that, so I don't need this process. Now, notice that there is no gamma setting for 2.2. In basic mode here, we don't have a choice, but 2.2 is the default. So I'm perfectly happy to go with that. I'll go ahead and click Next. Now, as I mentioned, the first step in the, in the process is to have this software guide me through setting the controls on my monitor. Now, this particular software also has the ability to take over my monitor and set those controls for me. It's the first time I've seen this functionality. I'm going to, in fact, do it manually, though, because I want you to see how the process works. The next step would be to start the measurement. So the software is giving me instructions to flip over a cover on my device here. 
And now I'm going to place this device in the center of my monitor, just like it shows here. Of course, you're not going to see the device sitting on my monitor. Now, it has an anchor in the back to keep it from sliding down on your monitor. If you find that you can't get it flat against the monitor, you can tip the monitor up a little bit to get it flat. I'm going to go ahead and say OK to this advice. Now it's asking me here what controls I have available on, for my monitor. As I mentioned, you might only have a brightness control. You may as well have a contrast control and then RGB controls. Now by RGB controls, what it means here is access to setting individual settings for red, green, and blue. It's not just the access to color presets like 6500 or 5000. So check your manual or experiment with the buttons on your monitor to see which controls you have. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And now the measurement process has started. The software is measuring contrast, and it's telling me here to set it to the maximum using my monitor's buttons. So I've already done that to save a little bit of time here. So I'm going to click Next. And in a minute, we're going to see how the contrast compares to what I need it to be. And in fact, it is exactly what I need it to be. If the line had appeared up here, I'd need to go into my monitor and reduce the contrast setting. If it had been down here, I'd go into my monitor and increase the contrast setting. Notice that it's continuing to flash here. It just measures continually in case you're making adjustments to your monitor, so it can provide you immediate feedback on the effect of those changes you're making. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and now it's measuring the white point, or the color temperature, of the monitor. And it's telling me that I have too much green and too much blue in my monitor, and not enough red. Now, these three work together, in that not enough red, in fact, means that I have too much green and too much blue. So I'll bet, as I bump up the red, that will automatically bring down the green and the blue. So now is when I need to go into the buttons on my monitor. Now you're not going to see this happen because it's hardware functionality rather than software functionality, so it's not being captured by my video capture process. But I'm going to go ahead and come into the red here, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus button. I'm going to go ahead and increase red. And as I'm doing this, we should see that red number come up. Now, in this case, because I messed it up so much, I have to go pretty far. Now, as I adjusted the red, you saw the change up here in the measurement, but I know you didn't see any change in the color of the white here. That's because it's only my monitor that's displaying the information incorrectly, and you're not seeing what my monitor displays. But when you do this process yourself, you're going to see the color change here, now I've got a little too much red, so I'll bring it down a little bit, I'll slow down, let it read, and I'll just get it as perfect as I can. Now sometimes it's telling you to increase a color, like increase green, and when you look at your monitor settings, your green is already maxed out. Well, remember that increasing green is the same thing as reducing red and blue, so that's how you can accomplish that balance. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and we should get to Brightness here. So my target luminance is 80, and the monitor is currently set to 245. Now this is very common with today's LCD monitors. The default brightness value on them is very high. So I'm going to go ahead into the Brightness using the controls on my monitor. And now that I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the brightness. You'll see it come down. Now What's going to happen here, because I've been through this, the brightness setting on my monitor runs from 0 to 100, and I've just reduced it all the way down to 0, and I still can't get it dark enough to get this luminance value down to my target of 80. But remember, our goal in this first process of setting our monitor is just to do the best we can, using whatever subset of controls we have and getting the settings as close as possible. They don't need to be perfect. So this is just one example out of the three where I just couldn't get to the center. 
The next step in the process, though, is going to measure any continued inaccuracies and build that profile for Lightroom to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And now the software is going to do a full range of measurements of color, brightness, and contrast. Now, with this particular software, it takes a couple minutes. This is actually much faster than my old i1 display. So even though I love some of the colors that come up here, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video rather than put you through all of them and wait for it to finish. Okay, it's just finished, so it's telling me to take the device off my monitor and to flip over a cover that protects the, the measurement lens. And after I do that, it basically tells me to, to put it down that I'm done. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Now this step's a little confusing to me because I've done the measurement. So this is where we started out before we did the measurement. I clicked on this. Now that I've done that measurement, I'm going to go to Next here and I'm going to name my profile here. Now I'm fine with this name. I'm going to come in here though and I'm going to add the date. We'll call this uh, the 26th of July. And I'm going to set this to remind me once a month to recalibrate. Your monitor will drift over time, so this isn't just a one-time process. Now I find that once every one to three months is sufficient for mine. Now I'm going to create and save this profile. It's going to be saved into the System Profile folder and Lightroom and other color managed programs are going to know to apply this profile when they display this green to you. So Now this software can show me what my monitor looked like before and after. So I'll click on before, it was pretty green. Click on it after, the skin tones look much better. This software even has several different photographs that you can look at before and after on. So that's the process. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Home button just to show you that in the advanced mode on this particular device, there is also one other handy feature. This looks a little different, but my goal here is to profile my display. I'll set my monitor. I've got the white point, the luminance, the contrast ratio. I'll leave it native. This other feature has the device read flare on my monitor. If you turn off your monitor and you look at the light shining on it, that's considered to be flare. And of course, impacts your perception of what you're seeing in Lightroom. So this particular device, I can actually point it out the screen. It will measure that ambient light falling on the monitor and adjust the contrast to compensate for that. So that's the one additional feature I wanted to show you in here. I'm going to go ahead and, and hit Next just to show you that there's a lot of settings in here that I ignore completely. The gamma here is set to 2.2 as the defaults. I'm good with that. I'm good with all of the other defaults in here. I'm good with what it's suggesting in terms of patch size and colors. So I'll go to Next, and then I would just start the same process we've been through. Now I believe with the Color Monkey that the process is much more automated. You set the important settings, and it pretty much takes over from there. So if my demonstration of the basic mode here with the i1 Display Pro was already too much for you, I wouldn't hesitate to turn to the Color Monkey or that level of product. Okay, so now I have peace of mind that my monitor is telling me the truth. This concludes the video on calibrating your monitor.